If you need a charging solution for your trip through your country or through all of Europe, then check out Meingau Autostrom. With Meingau, you can charge it over 550,000 charging stalls all over Europe. You start your charging process with the app, with a card or with this tiny little chip that you can have in your keychain. And there's now a version made of wood. Looks great. Just check them out in the link in the description below. Good morning everyone, I'm in the Cupra Born V set and today I'm going to do the long distance test. I started with 80% right at the highway, preheated car and I'm trying to drive around 600 kilometers. As always I'm using a better route planner. The navigation system in the car is great for navigation, but it's not amazing when it comes to planning chargers. Number one, it's not using the chargers that I want to use that are uh, not as pricey. That's important. And number two, I want to charge at locations where there are more than four or at least four charging stalls. I don't want to go to a 150 kilowatt charger um, where there's one charger or so and a better route planner can do that and navigate it somewhere in the north uh, a different route like last time where we had so much uh, construction zone but today since it's tuesday and trucks are allowed on the highway it's busy especially now so i'm i'm driving pretty slow my average speed is only 112 for not having charged it it's not good um, I have 90 kilometers to the first Georgia, already drove 107. Um, and by the way, today a better route planner gets my state of charge of the car from Anode, not from Tronity and not from an OBD dongle. Anode is just the connection of the car to the app and you just put in your app credentials in uh, Tronity in Anode and then it's connected and it's doing that. And I should arrive with around, it's wrong right now because the connection of the app is not every two seconds. It changes. I have 44% state of charge here. Here it says 50. Uh, it says I arrived with 19, so it will be with 14, which it said before, by the way. So I'm okay with it and I'm tr staying on this highway for most of the time. Um, so no problem at all. I have my heat setting at 24 degrees, seat heater on one, I have my pups, our dogs in the back, um, because it's during the week Cindy is working. Usually I do these tests on Sunday when Cindy is off and the dogs stay with her, but today that's not possible. And by the way, I see that there are six charging stalls with each 300 kilowatt. Well, it will be hy three hyperchargers where they share the 300 kilowatt on each charger, I'm guessing. I am at the first charger and a better route planner tells me I should charge to 77%. My consumption for the trip 249, 195 kilometers driven, average speed only 112 kilometers an hour, arrived with 16%. Battery temperature is perfect, I preheated the battery, I shook it 181 kilowatts, so it is a different uh, it is the charging curve of the ID4 GTX, not of the ID4 Pro that the Cooper Tavascan had. Ha! Huh. Nice! So the same as the ID3 GTX, which makes sense. And we are, let's do this just to be sure. Here are the pulls. We have four. So we have eight 
charging stalls here. There's an i5 and a Mercedes EQA charging here. And this is our beautiful Cupra Born V set in the nice color. What are we getting at the charger? Let's see. 186 kilowatt at 24%. That's the stuff it charges. Great. Cool. I'm gonna walk the dogs a bit because it's not raining. I have to take advantage of this. I'm scared it's gonna rain all day. It's still at around 100 kilowatt at 71% but goes up and down here and I should be done in a short while in four minutes or so at 80 percent so may maybe even in three minutes and if anyone wants to see the pups we have Olivia, Rudy and Wesley we just had a nice walk not too long but just a bit left the charger I think it was 77 or 78 percent I'm already on the way to the turnaround point which is in 78 kilometers and it is a a road where I really turn around <laughs> so it's not some uh, destination it's really on the highway so I know but we go back in a different way and it's got a, a better route planner wants to charge at a different location then which makes sense I think it's Ionity I, I, I'm not sure I haven't looked I'm fine with it it's a bit sad that I cannot see I see the state of charge at arrival at a turnaround point but right now I cannot see uh, how I arrive at the charger and what charger it is what times and everything I can see that in the app but not here on the screen at Android Auto that would be nice I would like that Ooh -hoo, corner uh, drive overall um, it feels amazing it's really quiet it's comfortable I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the seats I find them a bit hard and long they're not the most comfortable seats I don't have massage function for a long trip that's really nice but I'm okay with it warmth it's nice and warm here there's a loose seat air on the other side uh, it's warm seat heating is okay I don't have seat ventilation for the summer that said um, Drive, but driving comfort is amazing. The self uh, steering assist, travel assist, and uh, cruise control work perfectly. Even in the beginning, where it rained like crazy, it really was uh, went, uh, uh, drove perfectly. I was a bit nervous, of course, when it's so busy and so raining, but it worked great. Um, wiping system is okay today, so the sensitivity fits the the, the rain that it is today for the rain sensor, the sensitivity setting. Um, the only thing that's not amazing, and I said it, uh, also it's not amazing with the steering assist, and I said it in the other video already, is that if I just hold it and I don't grip hard, it doesn't recognize my touch. So if I I'm, if I'm, have to do something like now, where I have, uh, uh, go around the steering wheel and everything, it works. But if I'm just going straight and I'm just touching it a tiny bit, the pressure is not enough. I have to press a bit more. And that's only in the Born. The Tavascan was fine. Every ID that I ever had I have ever driven was fine. Um, it's just this car. Huh.
drive is good, listening to a, a audiobook and the sound system is good, sounds great, I can understand everything even when driving 140, that's important, don't have to turn it up extremely and the cruise control, I mean it slows me down wonderfully here but not too much with the truck, amazing and then it accelerates me. Awesome, so really liking it here. I'm okay with the consumption by the way. I know that I'm not driving the, the 140 the whole time, but still this is a lower consumption than the range test at 130 I had yesterday with a Volkswagen ID3 Pro, which has a smaller battery, is lighter, but it has the old motor. This in here is the new efficient motor and it really works awesome. Only 14 kilometers to go to the turnaround point. I'm looking forward to that. Arrived at the next charger, a better route plan tells me I have to charge to 80% and I'm gonna do this. And this is my data, consumption went down even though I could drive the 140 all the time when there was not a speed limit. And my time, um, I drove 377 kilometers and it's almost 4 hours, in 13 minutes it's 4 hours, so right now I'm a bit under 100 kilo I'm a bit above 100 kilometers an hour average speed including charging but it's gonna be less when we start but hopefully when we arrive we get it again. I was on this charger many times before there's a Cooper Tavascan charging here but there's a Cooper dealership here so maybe he's charging here um, and it's a great charger we have four Adal Pulse and they, they each have two, it's, it's a hypercharger and it works perfectly, I like it. I'm on the last leg, it's 206 kilometers to the starting point and that would mean on the, on the, on the trip meter 589. I thought it was exactly 600 kilometers. Maybe uh, it was a shorter. No, I don't know. Who cares? Um, around that, it tells me I should arrive at 12:39, and I should arrive with 8%. Maybe I have to slow down a tiny bit. I don't want to. Well, arriving with 8% is fine because right there is a Tesla supercharger. So when I do the saying goodbye thing, I can charge a minute or so. It's fine. But that's great, it charged amazing. I mean, I plugged in, checked if it's working, then I filmed a bit what you have seen, then I took the dogs for a walk around the gas station and it was at 70% and I put the dogs in. I prepared everything to go off and it turned off because the charge limit was set to 80%. So I'm, I was, that was amazing. So this car is amazing for a long distance trip. Um, it charges amazing. Consumption I find totally okay for the way I'm driving and that it's wet constantly. I'm happy. So I'm gonna drive the 140 again the whole time. And if I see that my range margin to what I have to drive is getting less and less then I'm gonna drive slower right now 194 kilometers to go 251 kilometers of range that is eh, 80, 48 58 58 kilometers am I right yeah 58 kilometers and if it's getting way less then I'm gonna change that and drive slower
I'm on the last stretch, 60 kilometers to go. I'm driving 150 because even I'm driving, I don't know, for the last 20 minutes, 150. I still have 46 kilometers of margin. I'm going to use that. Um, car thinks I should arrive with, uh, a better route planner thinks I should arrive with 18%. It's going to be 6% less because it says I have 38%, but I have 32. So 12% is still fine. I'm okay with that. Um, I can drive really nice. It's busy, but not horrible. So all fine. Had to he uh, heat it up in here a bit more. It, when the sun was out, they had to could turn it down pretty well. It was eight, nine degrees, but now it's only six. I arrived at 12.39 and uh, this is my consumption, that's the kilometer shown and here the only driving time or when the ignition was on was 5 hours but I drove less than 6 hours and 5 minutes have to be deducted because I was on the toilet but we're gonna analyze everything at home. Now let's go through the data. We had an average consumption of 253 watt hours per kilometer. The trip meter shows 585 kilometers, but the real kilometers, Google Maps says 597. 12 kilometers more, but we have seen that in my range test that it was also four or five kilometers difference. But, and it didn't drive almost 600 kilometers, but I checked it again and again. What chargers did I use? How did I get there? I didn't do any shortcuts. It's really 12 kilometers more, so it's almost 600 kilometers. So a uh, better route planner when I planned it was right. It's almost 600. That's why in the video I said, I thought it was 600. <laughs> and I drove it in almost six hours, uh, five hours, 50, 55 minutes, and then I deducted five minutes for being on the toilet that gets me an average speed of 102 kilometers an hour so that's awesome everything above 100 kilometers an hour average speed including charging is amazing and in the winter you have to think that it, it means higher consumption um, and you need battery heating so it's not just the heat inside and it was uh, cold so that's of course always bad and charging sessions we only charge twice once 25 minutes 53 kilowatt hours where we have an average power of 127 and as you seen in the video i charged once to 77 percent and once to 80 percent um, and the second time 24 minutes 52 kilowatt hours that's all not seconds, um, 130 kilowatt average power, which is amazing average power of 130 kilowatt from 15 or something to 80%. Really awesome. It was a good drive. It's a great car for long distance. The battery is amazing. The motor is great and efficient. 253 on that day. I'm really okay with it. That was an awesome drive. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Battery Life One, and if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. And here on YouTube, there's also channel membership. And if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes, I have a third YouTube channel behind the battery. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.